everyone, it's Erin from Digital Photography for Moms. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Dropbox to transfer photos that are in one Lightroom catalog on one computer to another Lightroom catalog on a different computer. Now, if you use Dropbox, you know that it's really easy to transfer files, right? Whether it's a word processing file or just a plain photo file, you can easily save it on one computer and then open it in the Dropbox folder on another computer. Using Lightroom, it's not so easy, though, because of Lightroom's catalog. So if you know much about Lightroom's catalog, you'll know that many things that we do to photos are not stored in the photos themselves. They're actually stored in Lightroom's catalog. So things like edits and keywords and things like that are not stored initially in the photo files. So in order to use Dropbox, we need to go through a couple of extra steps to make sure that those changes that are stored in the catalog actually get applied to the new catalog. So what you see here is that I've got some photos that I imported while I was traveling. So this is a method that I mostly use when I travel. Um, I want I tap my laptop with me. I want to import my photos at night so that I can look at the pictures I got and maybe share some on Facebook or whatever. And when I do that, I always import the photos using Lightroom and store them in my Dropbox folder on my laptop, as you can see right here. And you can see that these photos were from a trip to Arkansas that we took. I've got subfolders for our visit to the lake as well as our visit to Little Rock. So two subfolders that have all of these images. You can see that I've applied ranking flags to some of them, the white flags. I've also edited some of the photos. So if I were to take this photo to the develop module using shortcut D and then open the crop tool, you can see that um, this photo has been cropped and I've also adjusted the white balance. I'm going to return to the library module using shortcut G for library grid. You can see also that I've converted this photo to black and white. So I've made these edits just so that you can see how they transfer between computers. So when you're working on this temporary computer, it's pretty much business as usual. You want to make sure that you're storing those photos in the Dropbox folder on your laptop or whatever the temporary computer is. You want to sort them and cull them and rank them as usual, keyword them as usual, and edit them as usual. There are two extra steps that you have to do though. The first one is that you need to think about your catalog specific changes. So most of the changes like the edits we make, white balance and exposure and cropping and all that, anything you do in the develop module, that is not catalog specific. While those edits are stored in the catalog, they can also be transferred to the photo. Things that are catalog specific are mostly the organizational and ranking tools the flags, the white and black flags, the stars if you use the five star ranking system, or the color labels. These are all catalog specific and cannot be transferred into the photo file. So for these guys I use keywords. Now for me personally I hardly ever use the color labels every once in a while I will. Same goes for the stars, but I use these pick flags all the time. So just as a refresher on that, you add white flags to the photos that are your favorite. You can add black flags to the photos that you have rejected completely and want to get rid of. And then everything in between, I don't flag at all. So for those black flags, at this point, you want to go to your photo menu and say delete rejected photos. If you have any, Lightroom will confirm that you want to delete them and ask them whether you want to delete them just from the catalog or from the catalog and the hard drive. So for me personally, if I've rejected them, I never want to see them again, so I do remove them both from the catalog and the hard drive. Okay, so after you've cleaned out all those black flags, you want to sort out, using these flags as an example, you want to filter out so that you're just looking at the white flags. So using the attribute, line up here on my library filter bar, I'm going to select the white flag. And so now I am just looking at white flag photos. I want to type Commander Control A to make sure they're all selected, and they are. 
And then over here in my keywording panel, I am going to add a keyword that will transfer with the photos that tells me, hey, these were the white flag photos. So for these guys, I'll just type in white flag. I'll hit enter to apply this keyword to every photo that's selected. So now if we go look at this particular photo and we pull up the keywords, there it is, white flag. Okay, so that's the first of the two steps that you need to do before transferring your photos. Now before we go on, I am going to export this photo as a JPEG because the process is slightly different for JPEGs and RAWs and I just want you to see both. So I am going to save this file in the same photo as the original. I am going to add it back to this catalog and I'm not going to change the name and I'm not going to resize it. So it's just going to be a simple JPEG. I'm going to hit export and now you'll see that I've got a JPEG and a RAW sitting right next to each other. So notice at this point that I have turned off my white flag. I want to transfer all of my photos to my desktop, whether they have white flags or no flags, because I like to keep them all. All right, so with no filter applied, I'm going to type Command or Control A again to select all of the photos. I'm going to go to the metadata menu and select Save Metadata to Files. And so what it's telling me here is that if I'm using a proprietary quote unquote raw file, meaning a CR2, an ORF for Olympus, a CR2 for Canon, that is, an NEF for Nikon, or any of those traditional raw files, Lightroom is going to create a separate sidecar file. So this is a file that's going to end in XMP. And if you look on your uh, hard drive, you are going to see this XMP right next to the original RAW. For anything that's not RAW, Lightroom is going to put these changes actually inside the original file. So that's what we're going to see for our JPEG. All right, so I am going to hit the continue button and this is going to happen very quickly, you can see. So now opening my finder, I want to show you what we see here. So for every raw photo, I now have this XMP, which really kind of looks like gibberish, but it has all of these changes memorized in it. And for the JPEGs, you'll see that I don't have a separate XMP file. So I've got the raw and the XMP that goes with it, but the JPEG is by itself. And you can see here in the preview, that that JPEG has been saved as a black and white. So we know that the edits have been applied to it. Okay, so that's it for the laptop computer. I am going to switch over to my desktop now and show you the second half of the process. Okay guys, so here I am on my desktop computer now. And I'm again in my library grid and I'm looking at my Dropbox folder and you can see that that Arkansas folder is not listed. I haven't I haven't brought it into Lightroom. And that's okay. I don't want my photos to live permanently in Dropbox. So this is an important point. These photos are actually going to live on my external hard drive where all of my other photos live. So I'm not using Dropbox at all on this side of the equation within Lightroom. So what I'm going to do is click on the import button. And in this import window, usually here you're selecting your camera's memory card as your import source. But this time I am going to go to my hard drive and this navigation path is going to be different for you depending on what your operating system is. Um, and I am going to go to users, Aaron, Dropbox. So that's where I find it on my Mac using my current operating system. But again, that is different for you potentially. Okay, so right here you can see my Arkansas folder. And if I click on it to expand, you can see my two subfolders inside it, the Lake Hamilton and the Little Rock. Also, you can see all of my images right here. So the important step here is the destination. So this is where I am going to store it in my normal photo storage uh, setup. So if these photos were taken in August 2017, I would click on that button and I'm going to create a subfolder called Arkansas. And I'm going to import these photos 
onto my external hard drive, which is this one, into the August 2017 folder and the Arkansas subfolder. So I'll select import. All right, so my import has uh, completed and you can see that everything got uh, imported great. Uh, this is the JPEG and you can see that it is a JPEG just like we'd expect, the edit kept and it converted over. In addition, it does have that white flag keyword that we added. Now this version of the photo is a raw file, so taking it into the develop module using the shortcut D, I can convert it right back to color and edit it just like I would any other raw file. Same goes with this image, which I had cropped previously. So turning on the crop tool, you can see that I could uncrop it if I wanted to. And over here in the white balance section, you can see that my custom white balance settings transferred as well. All right, so returning back to the library grid using that shortcut G, the last thing I need to do is apply the flags to those photos that previously had flags. So this time I'm going to use the text filter and I'm going to type in the name of my flag, which was white flag, and I'll hit enter. And down here you'll see that seven of my 11 photos did have that keyword. So from here I can type command or control A to select all of the photos. I can type the letter P, which is the shortcut for the white flag, the pick flag. Okay, so that's it. It's, uh, it's a technique that works. I wouldn't, I think it's maybe too cumbersome to use like on a daily basis, say that you want to, um, you've got your photos on your desktop and maybe you want to work tonight on your laptop so that you can sit in the living room. I don't know that I would go to all this work to make that happen, but you know, it just, it depends on what you personally need. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any questions at all, come leave a comment on the blog post on my website. And here's the link for that right here. You can click here or click under the video. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.